The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, we're going to be talking about exactly what's happening on the market, what we traded today, and what we're looking at going forward. Now, the big area on the market, what were we talking about? Specifically on ES Spy Futures, the biggest thing we've been watching has been the 200 moving average on the daily. If we bring this up really quick, it's going to be this dotted line right here. And we... Ultimately, what's been the, the game plan going forward? If we're below the 200, we're bearish. If we get above it, you flip back to bullish. So far, it's been nothing. If we look at what happened on the pre-market and after hours yesterday, a lot of nothing. Just flatlining for essentially you know 10 hours roughly. And then markets open and sellers step back in. Now, what I want to say about this is volume hasn't been that substantial. And you're going to get more volume today than you did yesterday. Volume still coming in in the after hours. So it's going to be around the same, give or take, from yesterday, around 77 million. Average daily volume is sitting around 84 million, I believe, for SPY. So it's still below average. Now, typically, what do we talk about when it comes to comes to this volume? Specifically, the big thing we've been talking about is you get a lot of confirmation with volume. What does that mean? So, for instance, when we look at some of this big volume, the big volume we had back here on the 30th, this was confirmation of the upside. And basically, we pushed up for basically two days. And then as we started this week, it's been a lot of slower volume, but we've been chopping to the downside. So I really love to see volume to get us our confirmation. But luckily for us, we had that 200 MA to give us overall direction. From that, that's been able to really get our trades. And just really quick, we have a new thing that we're doing here in the Discord, so it's easy for me to show what we've been looking at. Today, we had Tesla. These were actual trades, NVIDIA. I'm still sitting in NVIDIA puts. I believe NVIDIA is one of the best playing opportunities for the downside. I've been talking about this for a while. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more in the, in the near the end of the video. And then some trade ideas we posted, Amazon and Microsoft, those went pretty well also. So that's what we've been really looking at today. In video, we'll talk about that again here in a sec. But if we look at that, having that indicator has really been, you know, a lifesaver, right? It's really simple. If you hold below the 200 MA on the daily, you stay short. It's it's that simple. There's no other way to put it. It's it's really that easy, and it's been almost foolproof so far. Look at Nasdaq. This is where things really get ugly. So if we look at NASDAQ, you came right back into, you know, we had the demand down here roughly, you come right into it. But if we look what's happened, basically our three main levels, we have that level of 12.1, 11.8, and then down here at 12.5 roughly. And you're really just stair stepping down. It's been ugly. We keep saying it, you know, bulls take the stairs, bears tend to take the elevator. And it seems like we've been waking up and they just take the elevator to the next level. Now. What I will say is this is kind of going to be one of your main areas to where you got to see buyers step in if they're going to. That's what I will say. So this is going to be a massive level. If you lose this, it's looking like you're dropping back down to, you know, when, when Powell had that overall speech that kind of shot us up roughly. So these are main areas you got to be looking at. And so right now, you know, if we start breaking below 11.45, it's not good because you have a lot of ill liquidity going to the downside. I'm going to just tell you that right now. So you need to see this 11.5, 11.45 area hold. Now, the important part about this week is that it's a blackout period. And what does that mean? We've talked about economic events to come. So basically this week, we have nothing, no big events, right? Friday, we have PPI. Tuesday of next week, we have CPI. And then on, thir on Wednesday, sorry, we have the Fed meeting. But until Friday, we have nothing. Usually we have some Fed talking, we have jobs data, we have nothing, people. It's just absolutely dry. And so going into this, a lot of the market, and me included, I anticipated it's upside, right? Because we've only had really good news come out. But this has been the the the, the turn of the table, if you will, right? We've seen it, you know, they say it, Michael Scott, oh, how the turn tables, right? If we if we look here, a uh, very minimal volume. But that volume has only been sellers. And if we look even further, really looking at the volume throughout the day, buyers aren't showing up. And this has been one of the focal points of what we do when it's trading, right? We're always looking at our buyers showing up when you get to demands specifically. At 11.8, they showed up for a second, 
a little bit of stagnation, and then pushing down. So going into tomorrow, it's going to be a very big question of, do buyers show up? Can they at least give you back above 11.6? You know, where do they do they show up? Do they, do they continue or do, do sellers continue to dominate? And right now, we may not be seeing it with volume, but what we're seeing the confirmation, if you will, is on equities. And if we look at equities such as Apple, look at this downside we're seeing over the past two or three days. The rejection of 150 yesterday all the way down to 142. You don't see $10 of downside typically on Apple. Very unlikely, but it's happening. Going in a little bit further, Meta, one of the biggest plays I've been telling you guys about. Again, if you're not following on Twitter, I recommend doing so. Again, you know, we got Holiday Tyler here. I'm trying to get in the, the, the season, the mood, if you will. I told y'all a few days ago, December 2nd, I posted this chart. Meta key level 122s could be one of the best sh short opportunities out there. That key level going back all the way to 2017, right? Boom, you come to that level. So what's happening? Well, how's this playing out? Massive downside. You're seeing downside basically from everything we we that was showing strength, right? You have a triple top here on Microsoft, one, two, three. More and more downside. Again, I'm posting all these on Twitter so you can see these charts. I can only give you so many updates and it's in a very time constrained time, right? So I can only make these videos right now. I'm not gonna make 10 videos a day. That's just ridiculous. You wouldn't watch them, right? So on Twitter, I'm just allowed to give you more information throughout the day and better reactions. But right now, I'm just telling you what I'm looking at to trade. And again, when you're looking at that 200 MA and you're seeing momentum hold you below, it has to be a cause for concern. So when we look at SPY, if we're looking at what's happening here on ES, I mean, you're coming to the the, the, the the end of the line here, if you will. 3,900 is your next big area. It's that previous swing high that you had and this swing low here. So 39.25, 39.2 to 39.10 is your next big level. And you've already had that test. You get below this, again, a lot of illiquidity, your next big demand. I'm just saying on the four hour is all the way down here. I'm just saying it comes all the way down to around 3770, 3750. So there's a lot of room for potential downside if buyers cannot hold you at this area. So again, like I said in yesterday's video, it's all about being patient right now. We've had that big move up to our key level of 4100. We were wanting more potential upside, but as of now, buyers can't give you any sign of hope, right? To even consider going back long, you gotta get back over the 200 MA. I'm gonna say it on repeat. 200 MA, 200 MA, 200 MA. That's been the line in the sand for roughly the past year. Again, I don't make these up. I'm just showing you what I'm looking at. Again, this is just what I'm looking at. If you look here, this blue line is a 200 MA on the daily. Rejection, 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 rejection. We broke above. Guess what? We had some good days of trading to the upside. And then boom, rejection. That's how it's going right now. If we look at the SPY, what's happening here also? You know, you have to be able to look at this from an unbiased standpoint. Again, I tell you guys when I'm long. I tell you guys when I'm short. I, I try to be as transparent as possible with all my positions, right? I all, You can never catch me in a lie here on the channel because I post the winners. I'll post the losers every single time. But if we look here at SPY, and again, you, you have to be able to acknowledge it. I have to acknowledge the fact that as of right now, you're just not that bullish now. Sellers just took over, right? And for all the bullish behavior that I was looking for, we just didn't get the continuation to get what we wanted. And right now you're sitting again in this wedge here on SPY. You can zoom out and it's kind of been the same pattern over and over and over, just again and again and again. And so it's just been coming down and now you're breaking out of this level. So as we look at SPY, you can see you're breaking down into demand, but now you're getting below it and flipping that level. This is the cause for concern here. So I have to just be able to identify what's happening. And I know some people are gonna say, well, Tyler, in your last video, shorts are trapped, this, that, this, that. Again, I can't, I, I have to clickbait. It's just what I have to do here on the channel. But what I'm gonna tell you though, when you watch the videos, I break down everything that I'm looking at and everything that I'm doing. Next up, VIX, like I told you guys about. I do, and I kind of did anticipate a little bit of sideways movement here. But man, you just bounce straight out of this key level. Again, this is marked basically every massive level here on VIX for the past year, going all the way back through January. You have not been able to get below the $19 region, really, like 18.9 roughly, but you're bouncing out of this level. So when we look at this, 
it, it is cause for concern of what's happening. And then the next question has to be is, how are we going to react when we come to the next Fed meeting? And what happens if CPI grows, right? So these are areas we have to be considering going into this coming, you know, the end of this week and next week overall going into Christmas. These are big concerns for myself. So I am curious. I haven't gone extremely, I've gone a little bit heavy on some of these puts, but I have it all in, right? I want to be really clear that I'm, I'm still starting positions. I'm not overextending. I still have clear stops when we get to this. So I just want to make sure that's really clear and understandable. Also too, one of the big signs that told you that we weren't out of the woods yet was the inversion on yields, right? Yields, you're at 99.97. I've been highlighting, I've been, I've been trying to show you, you are still in that higher low trend from, you know, two years ago, you're still inverted to 10 to 30 year, you're 0 0.3, 0 0.003 away from getting inverted again. So these are concerns for me personally on the market, right? You're not out of it yet. Uh, that's why I've been making the long dated videos also. Every Sunday night, I release a video. You can watch those if you want to get a long-term view right here, Russia Bloodbath, that's the newest one. The one before this was the Black Swan, and you're seeing this take place. You're seeing the Russia price cap get installed. You're seeing these big issues rising slowly. You're seeing China supply chain going out the window. That's a lot of big concerns. And that's what you have to look at for a long-term perspective, not a today or tomorrow. That's, you know, two, three months out from here. So that's what I'm looking at there. So as I look at this, these are causes for concern. These issues, you know, I believe you had a little bit of a fake out with TLT. TLT is still looking decent. I will say that the 20-year bonds, but this could easily start dropping from this double top here. Now, what am I looking at for downside? What do I like for continuation? What, what are the big plays here? Now, again, NVIDIA, I'm going to highlight this as easily and quickly as possible. NVIDIA is one of the most interesting plays that, that is out there right now. So when we look at NVIDIA, I want to be really clear. I have to use trading view because I just have this chart. It just looks cleaner on here. If you're looking at what's happening, higher lows since October 12th. I've been telling everyone, if you get below this trend, I have to short it. It's one of the best opportunities risk to reward wise. You come to your 200 moving average, slightly rejected. You didn't really get there all the way. I'm going to go into a little bit more here in a sec, but you're breaking out of this now. Downside here, if you break below 150, you have to anticipate extreme volatility to the downside. So minimum target number one is around the 150, 155 range. Now, going further, when we look at semiconductors as a whole, SOXX, you have a bit of a head and shoulders playing out here and an immediate rejection of the 200 moving average on the daily time frame. Also, when I'm talking about the 200 MA, it's always on the daily. I'm not looking at four hour, two hour, anything like that. So you need to understand this is anchored to the to the daily chart on the 200. You're seeing a head and shoulders forming out here. If semiconductors break below this 360 level, I believe extreme volatility will play out. It's important to look at what's happening with supply and demand in China and in Taiwan, and as things heat up further in Taiwan also, with kind of this Cold War type thing we have going on with China, this whole trade war going on also, which we're restricting what we can send to them and these other companies, right? That's why I've been watching these. So looking at semiconductors, probably my favorite play right now is NVIDIA for that downside opportunity. I'm in a position right now. I have have the 150s for January 20th. I would feel better about the Februarys, but I just like the price of where I got them. So that's where I'm at right now. Today, overall, I made and was sitting at around $1,500. I posted that on Twitter so y'all could all see. It's all live pictures from the Interactive Brokers account. And then again, I do full recaps of the portfolio at the end of the month or beginning of the month. And so I'm going to do that January 1st into December so everyone can see that. So that's where we're at right now. A little bit further, some other stocks. I want to mention some of these. We're going to go over to TrendSpotter because I have all these saved. We're going to look at Meta. Meta was a big one, 122. I was telling everyone about this one also. You go all the way back on the daily. You have to go all the way back to 2017 to find this level. Let me go to the weekly really quick, and you can see where this was. It was your pivot level here. You can see you rejected here. Your low it goes a little bit further, and we can see where we're getting rejected here on the day, dropping massively. People trading this one also in Discord. I've been telling y'all, but I'm not just showing these on Discord. Of course, in Discord, I post when I like them, alerts here and there, but I show y'all here all the time on YouTube for free, on Twitter for free. So it's never like there's a paywall, people. If you're paying attention and you're locked in here on YouTube every single day, you're not gonna miss anything. Almost anything and everything I'm looking at, I post here. Walmart, what's happening there? Again, 
Love to see what's happening. You broke down from the, that level around 150, 150.5. You hit around that 149 level today. These, this is your last little area of demand. You break below this, it's looking ugly. Remember, Costco earnings on Thursday. Costco Target showing a lot of weakness with what's happening right now. You have to assume Costco is going to miss on earnings based on the preliminary and what they've announced what's happening of cost of goods and how that's rising across the board. This is concerning. So these are areas you have to be looking at and trying to spot in this trend. Now, again, I don't have any crazy plays I'm looking at. I showed you my favorite one. That's the one that I'm in as NVIDIA. There's nothing that I'm getting too crazy about and just FOMOing in. I don't have SPY or Q puts or anything like that. This is overall what I'm playing. But I want to tell people, be cautious because right now, this 11.5, 11.45 area is going to be a line in the sand. You have to anticipate a bounce, right? Every time you come into demand, like yesterday, yesterday end of the day, you're at 11.8, 11.7-ish. When you're at a key level, at a demand, when you're looking at a target, you can still be bearish, but you have to anticipate a reaction from that level. For instance, when we hit 12.1, I was still bullish, but we hit my target to the T, right? So you have to be able to step back and say, look, I'm going to wait. I'm going to see how we react. And I cannot anticipate or tell you what's going to happen at this level tomorrow, right? I have to anticipate based on supply and demand type trading that buyers will show up. But if they don't, again, I'm going to be riding these down through this level again. So that's what I'm looking at. That's how I'm trading. And overall, this is what I'm looking at. And again, if you want to see updates throughout the day of charts I'm liking, Twitter's the way to go, people. I can't give you constant updates here on the channel. I can only tell you what I'm trading based on and charts that I'm loving. And again, every chart that I've gone over, all the big winners, they've all been here on YouTube over the past month. Boeing, right? Big winner to the upside. Starbucks, big winner to the upside. Uh, we can go a little bit further. We can talk about Meta. We just talked about it. Rejection, almost $10 of downside so far. We can go into you know NVIDIA right? NVIDIA, you just started breaking down. We haven't really had the play yet. We need to see if it works out. But again, I can go on and on. Microsoft, triple topping at that level, but we traded that upside the next day from 249 back up to 255. I can go on and on. It's not about me being right, but it's here to show you that there's proof in what's happening here, right? So don't just take a thumbnail and run with it, right? Put in the work, pay attention, take notes, because I'm telling you, if they're winning in Discord, they're winning on Twitter, there's there's something happening here, guys. I want you guys to learn from what's happening and hopefully not have to go through some of the mistakes that I had to go through along the way. I'll see you tomorrow.